Hello everyone, my name is Yuan Yuan. I'm a PhD candidate from MIT, the Institute for Data Systems and Society. Today I'm happy to present our work on causal network motifs. This is a collaboration with the Facebook research scientists Kristen Ottenberger and Fresha Kuti. In this paper, I'm going to show you how we combine causal inference and the network motifs to understand spillover effects in A-B testing. So when we talk about A-B testing or controlled experiments, we may first think about the comparison between the treatment and control group. However, what makes the situation complicated is when there is a spillover effect. It means that the treatment assignments of the neighbors or any other people in the world may influence the outcome of the ego note. Say the treatment is the encouragement of getting a flu shot, then given the ego node is non-treated, the fraction of neighbors who are being treated may actually influence the outcome of the ego node. When we talk about um, this uh, A-B testing, we typically examine the data under the potential outcomes framework. And there is a strong assumption that is the stable unit treatment value assignment or SUDOVA. So under this framework, we assume that there's a binary treatment and for each treatment, there is a potential outcome. So that means that if the person were to be treated, the outcome is like Y zero, otherwise it's Y one then the outcome is like choosing between these potential outcomes. However, if there is a spillover effect, this pseudo assumption does not hold anymore. If we write down the outcome function, it shouldn't just be a function of the treatment assignment of the ego node. It should also account for the treatment assignments of I uh, and like any other people in the world, or at least the neighbors of the individual I. So there are several ways to address this issue. Uh, a typical way is to consider these exposure conditions. So instead of having this um, function as the treatment assignment of the ego node, it can also consider the treatment assignments of the whole population. And then the outcome variable is just like a choice among several exposure conditions. And here the D is a mapping from the treatment assignment vector for the whole population to a discrete value among the set D. So let me give you a concrete example. So um, as there is a fractional Q neighborhood exposure specification uh, under this specification, there are four cases. Say the ego node is treated and most of the neighbors are treated. Then this is considered the first type of exposure condition. And here by most, I mean, it means that the fraction of treated neighbors is greater than Q. Similarly, we can define three other different exposure conditions and then we can compare across different exposure conditions and then to understand how the spillover effect varies across different exposure conditions. So what might be missing from this approach? Um, there are at least three points. The first one is that how to consider the network structure in the ego networks. So you can imagine there's a reinforcement effect. Like if you have two friends who got treated then maybe they will discuss the treatment if they are close friends and eventually you will hear it and be more likely to also be influenced by their treatment assignments. Another possible theory is the structural diversity, which means that um, if you have several friends being treated but none of them knows each other, then in this case, the structural diversity is the highest and then the adoption rate of the ego node could also be highest if the treatment assignment is the promotion. So both of these theories requires the consideration of social networks. The second point is how to choose proper parameters in the specification. As an example, the fractional Q neighborhood should ask the researchers or practitioners to specify the Q. 
So in this case, how to choose the proper queue is a question. The third point is that because the researchers or practitioners can choose whatever exposure mapping they like, and they can even try to tune the parameters to present the data in the most beautiful way, but this might be a result of overfitting. So we also want to propose an approach that limits the researcher degrees of freedom. And to summarize our contribution, we uh, propose an approach to automatically specify proper exposure conditions. And this is a standard machine learning algorithm. That is first, we uh, do the feature engineering. That is we plug, uh, like uh, we characterize each legal network by the causal network motif. And then we use the unsupervised learning algorithm, which is a decision tree to convert this kind of uh, causal network motifs to a specific exposure condition. And then each leaf of the decision tree corresponds to a unique exposure condition. Okay, let me then talk about how we construct the causal network motifs. So network motifs are the subgraphs that occur repeatedly on the network. We require that for each um, network motif, it should have the uh, eagle node. Then we have the causal network motifs, which are the network motifs with the labels or the treatment assignments of the neighbors. So if there is a closed triad, then there are three different cases for the causal network motifs. That is, all of the neighbors are treated, one of them are treated, or none of them are treated. Then we construct a vector to characterize the treatment assignment of the ego network and also the network uh, structure of the ego network. So um, the first dimension should always be the treatment assignment of the ego node. And then we have each dimension corresponding to the um, number of a causal network motif over the corresponding network motif. For example, if you consider the, um, then for example, the uh, closed triads where everyone is treated, then there are like three and different uh, closed triads, but none of them are like uh, everyone is treated. So the value for that dimension is zero. Eventually we will have this vector, which uh, has the support that is from zero to one and then our next step is going to partition the space to several exposure conditions. So this is what our next step is doing. That is to do the splitting and then we have a result that is uh, after we use the decision tree based algorithm, each leaf of the decision tree corresponds to a unique exposure condition. So let me briefly talk about our uh, cutoff rule in the decision tree algorithm. Compared to the traditional decision tree, we have several revisions to uh, accommodate the nature of causal inference. First is the um, problem of selection bias. If we just take the average over all the nodes where they, um, they uh, are satisfied with some criterion and some exposure condition, then we may have some selection bias towards those uh, observations with a higher probability of belonging to the certain exposure condition. So we have to have, for example, the higher estimator to trying to exclude this type of ex and the, this uh, selection bias. The second point is that we want to also revise the rules of the splitting. So um, typically we just want to reduce the sum of square arrows in the decision tree algorithms. But here, because we want to make the difference between different exposure conditions as large as possible, we should make some revisions. And what we did is have this uh, inverse probability that is one over the probability of the certain observation belonging to a certain um, uh, partition of the total space. Then each node on the decision tree 
corresponds to a partitioning. So um, if the weighted mean of these two sub partitions is smaller and it's also significantly smaller than the current weighted SSE, then we consider it as a valid partitioning. Eventually we're going to choose the optimum partitioning that gives the smallest weighted SSE. We also did a lot of small revisions, such as how to consider the positivity uh, assumption in causal inference, how to do the only splitting, or how to consider a minimum leap size. Please refer to the paper for more details. So finally, I'm going to discuss the experiments. So we have one synthetic network and one real world network, and we verify the usefulness of our algorithm in both experiments. But here we just display the result of the simulation, say that we randomly generate the outcomes. Um, this is dependent on the structural diversity of the ego network. It's specifically, is the structural diversity of the treated neighbors. So in this case, the structural diversity is three. Here we have the, some irrelevant covariates, such as the, the size of the neighbors or the uh, gender of the ego node. But we also have important uh, terms, such as the structural diversity in the, uh, in the neighborhood and also the interaction term between the treatment assignment of the ego node and the structural diversity. In this case, it means that the, for the treated observations, the effect size should be much larger. This is one example of our algorithm. That is, um, it first partition on the first dimension, that is whether the ego node is treated or not. And then it splits on the, um, the proportion of this uh, open square where everyone is treated. So you can imagine that this corresponds to uh, how, to the, how large the structural diversity it is in the ego network. If it's small enough, then it will go to the left. Otherwise, it will go to the right. And you can see the average potential outcome is much larger on the right. Um, if this is a control observation, then our algorithm may just split on some third level motif. This is because, for, ex for example, there is no such an interaction term when there is, a, there is a zero value for the Z. So maybe the, the power is not large enough for the algorithm to split and only uh, any like high dimensional network motifs. So let me summarize the contribution of our result. First, we um, propose an approach that analyze uh, experimental data, especially when there is a spillover effect. Our algorithm is a two-step algorithm. We first do the feature engineering, which is using the causal network motifs to characterize the local treatment assignment condition in a eco network. And the next step is to use a decision tree based algorithm to label each observation as an exposure condition. Our algorithm is actually splitting on the treatment space rather than the covariate space. So this is the difference then for example, the causal tree algorithm. There are many interesting future directions, such as how to go beyond the tree-based models, how to combine the partitioning of the treatment and covariate space, and also how to apply our approach to observational data set. With that, I want to thank your attention and thank you for listening.